Training these days is data-driven. Power and heart rate provide incredible insights into your performance and also really valuable way of pacing your efforts. But it wasn't that long ago when we didn't use data at all. We went out and smashed it on our bikes and gave it our best effort. And of course, it is still possible to make incredible improvements to your performance doing just that without having that data at your disposal if it's not something you can get your hands on. And in this video, I'm gonna share a few tips which will hopefully get you on your way to doing just that. First up, before we dive into some of the tips on how to train without data, it's worth taking a minute just to consider what you're actually training for and what you're working towards. If your goal is just to get out more, perhaps be a bit more active, take on a few more rides per week even on the bike, then it's worth noting that you don't need data at all if you do want to improve. But what you might find helpful and motivating is being able to see exactly what you've ridden each day, how far you've traveled, how long you've gone, and all the data that goes with that. At the very basic level, all you need for this is your phone and an app like Strava. But if you're perhaps working towards a big goal and you don't want to be looking at the numbers, you keep watching. Just because you aren't using data doesn't mean you shouldn't track how your rides have gone and what you've been up to out on the bike. A good training diary is the best place to start here. Make any notes on each ride, length, duration, how it went, and it can also be a great idea to rate each ride and how difficult it was from a scale of one to 10. If you manage to do this consistently, then you can build up a really good picture of what you've been doing on the bike so that then things are going right and you look back and what you've been up to and how you've been riding, you know that that's worked. Or alternatively, if you go through perhaps a bad patch, bad spell, you can look back and you can see exactly what you've been doing to contribute to that and then potentially make some subtle changes to change things in the future. You can also use a written diary as a plan, writing in when you're available to train and what you're working towards, making sure that you don't become inconsistent with your riding and also having that goal, that carrot at the end of it all that you're working towards, you can plan towards and build your riding around to keep that motivation high. Longer efforts of 10, 20, 30 minutes plus can be quite hard to pace if you haven't got any data at your disposal. But there are pretty simple ways to get around this, of course. You can use longer climbs, such as the one that I'm not on now, to gauge your effort. Give yourself a real good test from bottom to top, trying to keep your effort relatively steady throughout, no matter the intensity you're riding at, so you can really learn how your body responds and how you can then learn Push on next time around. Whew. Use climbs of different lengths in this way too to experiment and don't be afraid to push yourself outside your comfort zone. Go too hard at the start, go too hard at other times of the climb and don't be afraid of having to shorten your effort and stop it earlier than you'd have imagined. Power meters are a brilliant way to pace your effort, having that data there to look at and know how hard you're actually pushing but when you find your limits without this method, when you push yourself without knowing when you're perhaps going to break, that is really how you learn how to pace yourself properly. And doing this repeatedly will really allow you to improve not just your performance, but also your ability to pace and plan tactics and develop your cycling to the next level. Of course, we're not all blessed with climbs, um, such as the one I've just ridden up. So use the flats as well, use groups. There are brilliant ways as well to discover your own effort capabilities, try and hang with groups in a through and off fashion, swapping off, taking turns at the front and push on. Try and stay with a group that is perhaps a better ability than you. you can really take your cycling to the next level. Personally, my favorite way of adding intensity into a ride is focusing on shorter efforts, obviously, looking for somewhere that's between one and two minutes, starting off with a seated effort and trying to drive through the gears. Or you could focus on those shorter climbs and just putting yourself into the red, going as hard as you can up that short climb. And this is something that our very own national hill climb champ, Andrew Feather, likes to do. Just going out, finding those hills, going as hard as he can, from bottom to top. 
I also like something called up and over. So taking a 10 minute block, for example, and instead of trying to pace that 10 minute block as one long effort, instead you split it up into 30 second chunks. So 30 seconds as hard as you can, seated, pushing up through the gears, then 30 seconds, really easy riding, trying to spin the gears, take it easy. And having that alternating effort intensity really adds up by the end. I think you get much more out of it than if you'd have done one solid chunk. Of course, you do need time for this, but you can also be quite rough with it. If you don't have your data or even a stopwatch in front of you on the bike, you could count, for example, pedal revolutions or just go until you think you can't hold that effort anymore. Knock it back down too easy, back up again. And you can increase this over the weeks by potentially adding more blocks into each ride or increasing the duration of that up and over effort. Short sprints are perhaps the easiest way to give yourself a really tough ride without any data or anything to go off. And the best way I like to do this is to use a marker, leave it on the road, so the road's somewhere safe, mark out a roughly 200 meter stretch on the road, and then sprint through this distance, repeating a number of times, say 10 to start with, and gradually ramp that up as the weeks progress. You want to have a rolling start, so roll into the beginning, wherever you've set that, and then sprint as hard as you can through to the finish, taking some recovery time as you ride back to start once more. Tough one, gets you working hard, definitely gets the heart rate up. Low cadence work is something that is really beneficial for improving your strength out on the bike as you push the pedals with a higher torque. And you can start this with data or no data straight away. Just look to build in 10 minute blocks at first into your riding when you're pedaling at a slightly lower revolution per minute than you're used to, or cadence. So dropping from something like this, up the gears, and normally I'd like to sit at around 50 or 60 RPM. You'll notice the difference in force needed and also the difference in feeling compared to your usual pedaling style. And it's personally something that I've really found has helped my riding, particularly on shorter, steeper climbs, where you just need that added bit of strength, that added bit of punch to get over a climb. So it's something I think that is really beneficial to add into your rides. And it also helps with your pedaling technique and just having that bit of structure within a ride. And it's not something that's gonna put too much strain on your aerobic system to do it. You're doing this at a relatively low intensity, focusing on keeping that cadence in the, in the zone it needs to be, giving your form good, and also working in more blocks of this, perhaps increasing the duration of the low cadence work that you're doing over time and as the weeks progress. What I would say is that even if you aren't using data when you're out on your bike or training, that it can be really useful to try and still test yourself over time to see how you're coping with any training you're taking on and if you're staying on track. So what I tend to do is try and stick to the same stretch of road or climb you know really well and every few weeks or month try and test yourself up it. Time yourself from bottom to top and keep a record of this. This is really helpful because it can help banish any doubts you may be having about whether you're improving in the first place and also it keeps you focused, keeping you on track and stopping you from deviating from the plan you set out to get to your goals. It can be quite hard to tangibly feel if you are making any improvements. As the old saying goes, it doesn't get any easier, you just get faster. If you can, try to plan ahead with your rides so that they increase in terms of difficulty or intensity quite gradually. You don't want to start taking on more than you can chew too early. So I think a good rule of thumb is to try and plan things around every two or three weeks, then taking things a step further in terms of increasing the volume, the amount you're riding in terms of hours, or the intensity. So the amount of times you're putting yourself into the hurt locker, into the red, or maybe taking on some harder efforts on challenging terrain. You don't want to take on too much fatigue too early because in the short term, you may feel like it's working. You may think that things are going in the right direction, but that fatigue will catch up with you eventually. And most probably if you've taken on too much too early, it will catch up with you to the extent you have to take an enforced layoff from the bike and lose all that progress you've gained. 
there you go, a few tips then which I hope will help you get used to trading without data and be able to make some steps forward with your riding. I think the biggest one for me is just getting out there on the road on your bike, perhaps taking on routes or aiming for something you've never managed to achieve before, getting to a town that's a certain amount of distance away and managing to make it home. And you can plan these things before you head out the door, looking on maps, working out distances and then seeing if you can take those routes on and push yourself further than perhaps you've ever done. But let me know in the comment section down below how you like to get out on the bike and, and push yourself without any of the data that can be at your disposal. As always, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up. See you on the next one.